Krampus's deck and like the intricacies of how it works. Um, but also partly because uh, like Gonchalo plays a lot of attackers that aren't named Rayquaza GX, and if you're not one KOing Sylveon, it's a bit of a problem. But if you know, if you're not weak to Fairy, that might be more beneficial. Yeah, I think he's going to still have to look to take the the one hit knockouts. Um, we see on the coin flip, Hampus does get the start. Um, not too important, really, here because I don't think so. He's just going to magical ribbon turn one, as as you, and he can't do that. If you got attack. He's fine. Yeah. Um, and so basically, um, they are almost set up. They're going to have to go through a few mulligans. Um, we're ready as soon as they are ready to start, which means that as soon as they're set up, they can go. Um, we will see the prize cards soon. Um, there could be some interesting cards depending on. What kind of uh, you know, what kind of things they need for their matchup? Yeah, hopefully nothing too serious. And I do want to point out as well that Hampus has an excellent bow tie on, which makes all all of us look under right. Well, so so can we just point just... out that uh, there is a beautiful uh, bow tie also in or bow in the hair and around the neck of the Sylveon. You're right. So he, he is matching his. He, Pokemon. He's matching his Pokemon. A different color, <laughs> but he's he's going all out on for the star points here. And maybe that's a secret to success. Like he's here in the finals. I mean. I, if, if I said to you at the start of this tournament, yeah, Sylveon, come make the finals. I mean, you, you would not have believed me, right? I probably wouldn't, but only because I've spoken to a lot of people who are diehard Sylveon fans, <laughs> and they were really trying to convince me it wasn't the play. Um, Gonzalo here, making the time to go through the mulligans. You're allowed to do that. Your opponent has to reveal it. Um, and he's just like, cool, I'm just going to draw a load of extra cards. And that could actually be a big factor, because Gonzalo needs big turns, and he needs them quick. But on the other hand, I'm sure Hampus is used to people taking a few mulligans. Yeah, we saw it a few times yeah. yesterday. You'd think as well that, like, Ray is such a popular deck, you know? And and we were, you were saying that on paper, you know, Ray can do all this damage, it can take KOs in this Sylveon. But at, on the other hand, Hampus surely went into this tournament with a game plan against, against Ray. He surely has some kind of tricks up his sleeve. Well, so, talking to him uh, just now, uh, I was having a little chat with him whilst they were waiting to set up, uh, he was saying, well, look, I can, not, I can hit one hit knockout here. So I'll just do that. Like, I can search the DCE, I can start taking knockouts, and I can keep up. I can at least go ahead in prizes kind of quickly and go from there. Exactly. You'll find a win in whatever way you can. Um, Fairy Wind does a little more damage than the other mill deck we saw earlier. Tackle for 10. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 110 is a little bit more here. He'll get that win slightly quicker. The other thing that could come in handy here is Plea. Um, if Conchalo ever gets these Vega Vaults down, um, Plea GX to bring them back, pick them back up is going to really set him back. Yeah, so what Gonzalo's ideal board state will be is something that allows him to have either uh, ways to re-evolve. So yeah. he wants to be able to get, keep a Grub in, unevolve, and a Ray Candy in hand. So if he does get Plea, he just goes, Ray Candy, Vega Vault, cool, it's back. Let's just keep going. Yeah, definitely. So I think we're basically ready to go. So um, I believe they've told, been told that they can start. Hampus has gone for the Australian prize. Uh, unfortunately, but we can still read them. Yeah, we still see what's in there. The plume area, one of the plume areas is kind of inconvenient. A Sylveon is in there, um, which means he could actually wind up seeing uh, decked out. Um, and we'll see kind of where this game goes quickly. Um, in a lot of Sylveon matchups, maybe you don't even expect to take some prizes, but in this one, it sounds like Hampus is prepared to take a few of the cards that get stuck in there. So, yep. that's not too bad. Yep, and as soon as they... Uh, and like, actually, I believe have his, uh, you guys are certain. I've got his this here, Does he yes. play Gladion in that? He is indeed playing a Gladion. All right, so less of an issue for him than it could otherwise be. Yep. Um, in a position where they are basically able to grab whatever single piece they need out of the discard pile, yeah. uh, out of the prizes if they need it. Uh, we immediately see Fairy, Eevee, Energy Evolution. Let's go from Hampers. Yeah, he plays the, like a whopping 12 Fairy Energy. This is not just because you discard it with a Max Potion and you keep reattaching. It's also because... You desperately need a turn one. You're guaranteed to start with Eevee because it's literally the only basic he plays. Um, so in order to evolve it immediately, he's going to need that very energy. Yeah, it's a kind of thing where again, a lot of people have set them to work out what the optimal number is because you don't want too many. Any more than 12, you're taking spaces from the denial cards that you want to play, the heal cards. And any less than 12, you're running too high a chance of missing the fairy energy turn one. So it, this is basically where people have put, kind of gone, this is exactly what we need to be able to take these, um, to, to get into the situation. Yeah. Uh, and it's we very, say, It's very fitting as well, because Sylveon's just such a mathematical deck in every respect. Yeah, you have to be thinking and counting various things from your opponent so you can kind of keep keep up with them. Uh, something that will come up in this game is the number of energy recycler that Gonzalo has access to. We see one in the prize cards and he has a second one in deck, which means that he will be able to kind of burn, uh, you know, kind of put 
at least 10 energy back. Yeah. And that's a lot of energy to be able yeah. to put back. So, something Sylveon doesn't like to see is acceleration and recovery as well of energy. And when you come up against a card that just reads put five basic energy back in your deck, that, that can be a bit of a problem. Yeah. Uh, so Gonzalo, using the time that he has in the final to really make sure he knows what his resources are because yeah. he knows that this could be a long game one and he knows that he's going to have to count every single card and make sure he knows exactly what's going to be happening. Mm -hmm. uh, we see here, again, he just goes straight for the Stevens Resolve, uh, ready for uh, next turn. Um, and he's just kind of pre-selecting it. The judge keeps having a look like, what, what are you doing? Oh, oh, that's what this card does, I think. <laughs> I do want to point out as well that we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Oh, he's going for the Fang Club. Well, he's going for Fang Club. But let's talk about Stevens Resolve anyway because it's on my mind here. Um, but basically, it's Steven Resolve is the one that's come out on top. You know, the, the, the Lily or the Steven argument um, goes back and forth, and most people still lean towards the Lily, but um, Gonchalo decided to go for the Steven's Resolve, decided, you know what, most people aren't playing Jojo if they are, the light odds of them hitting in turn one, they're not going to affect me too much. So, and it's, it's clearly paid off. Like, yeah, it's an interesting decision, because it, it means he gets to not use as many items. And as we saw in the last round, that was a really big factor. Yeah, he played her in Trashland so well in that one. So, back to Hampus's turn now. So when you're Hampus and, and you're playing this, this bizarre kind of mill style deck, you know, there's nothing... Is it just discarding energy as soon as you see it? Is that your game plan here? Well, so you need to always be able to prevent just an attack. You don't really mind if that is done in such a way to... You know, discard every turn. You don't need to discard every turn. You just want to always stop them from being able to attack. Um, and so Gonzalo having a little look at some of the cards that are in the list. Seeing the Lysander Labs. Turns off the effects of all, all two cards in play whilst the stadium is in play. Um, yeah, another card we've seen a, a couple of people pick up on throughout the weekend. Yeah, there's been a few people using it be, um, as an out to things like weakness policy. You just leave them in place and just turn them off instead. Um, here, Hampus... Was I think using it? He said for things like the uh, skateboard, yeah, um, exactly. so that you could stick things in the active position a bit he, easier. He clearly likes locking people in the active because he's also got the one, the copy of Mount Lanakila, I believe. Yeah, we, part, a big part of his game plan in games where he knows he has, um, you know, he, he has to go for the slow strategy is find something with a big retreat cost because there's no float stone. Yep, and one thing in a big that has a bigger retreat cost in this particular matchup is Vega Vault. Yeah, so if he can stick that in the active, if he can keep the energies off it, he might be all right. Yeah, and being able to get to the point of getting to a Vika Vault, though, seems to be something he's going to take his time over here. Because he does kind of understand that it's not actually a quick deck he's up against. He does have a few turns where he's kind of able to slowly build up a board, hmm. then commit to a Rayquaza. Yeah, and this is one really cool advantage of uh, mill decks, and some rogue decks really in general, is that it forces your opponent to adapt like immediately and play in a completely different way than they normally would against Rant, like any other deck. Um, and if Kinchal is able to do that, that's really good. What's going to be the win going to win the game for him? Yeah, it seems the, to me though that because he discarded a Rayquaza very early off an Ultra Ball, that he may actually be thinking to not use them too often. He doesn't want to commit when he knows he can't one shot the yeah uh, the Sylveon. I think is actually his th reasoning. He's going to be going for something that means he can. Commit a lot of energy to board, but no no Rayquaza to get knocked out. Then move in to suddenly take a knockout. That that seems likely for sure. Uh, and the other thing is he, he plays four Rayquaza as well, so <laughs> don't think he's just ditching them and he's going to have trouble finding them. It is the full four count, despite all the attacking techs he has, like the Lugias and the uh, and the Shaman, which we saw last round. Yeah, neither of which will get any value here. The uh, Shaman definitely not. <laughs> no, um, neither of them will get any value just due to the fact that Hampus is very unlikely to be taking, um, you know, le letting him take two hit knockouts. Mm. Um, and the Lugia especially needing four energy to do any kind of significant attack as well. Just not very efficient against this kind of a deck. So we see the first crushing hammer from Hampus, discarding the lightning energy off of the active Vika Vault, and then a DCE. And yep, we see that he's sticking to his guns here of, <laughs> I can just take the prizes. I, I, you need to deal with the Sylveon, and I can still find enough ways to deal with your energy attachments before that. I like this a lot as well. Gonzalo does play Escape Rope, I believe, and that is one way he can get out of the active spot here, sure. But it's also like, if he doesn't, the payoff for Hampus is really big. Like, yep. Um, we could see something along the, those lines. He could also go for a, sec, uh, a second break, um, like way of getting to a second Vika Vault if he can get into that, because then he can just attach four energy per turn and yeah. Sylvia's going to struggle. That's true, yeah. So, 
But I, I kind of think that... But it's also the, the option, actually, of setting up a massive tapu lele. <laughs> I suppose it could. It's already, it, it's already hits 100. And it's not weak to vary. Exactly. So, so he could just go option. in and tap with the tapu lele in this matchup instead. And kind of go, well, look, you've got to deal with it now. Yep. And it's got a ton of energy on it. And I can keep putting two on per turn. I only, again, I say only need to put five energy. Uh, what, uh, seven, seven energy, I think, uh, onto the tapu lele. But when you can put f two per turn down... Yeah, it's, it's not as difficult to, to achieve, you know. We, we can't forget energy drive exists, that's for sure. Um, I was going to say, like, Hampus, I think, he might have this kind of sort of game plan to try and burn Gonchalo out of Rare Candy. Like, we've seen all these decks that they don't play um, Charger Book or, or anything like that. They, can, they don't play anything they can reuse. So if Gonchalo runs out of Rare Candy, he's not going to be able to get the Vika Vaults. If Hampus KOs this Vika Vault, that's one down. If he please, that's two more Rare Candies down. And if he ends up doing all that and clearing all these Vika Vaults off the board... He's probably just going to win the game. Yeah, it could also be a case if he's just going to take a knockout on a couple of them early, yeah, that force too. two Ray Candies down, and then go, okay, right now I can play you back, and you, there's no way you get back into this. Yeah. yeah it'd be a really interesting decision, uh, set of decisions from Hampus to... What, which game plan he wants to go for. Mm. With, with the, the amount of like one-off copies and stuff that he plays, there's definitely a lot of different things he can do each turn, especially with Magical Ribbon just constantly getting them all, all into his hands. You know, we talked about Macargo being good, about being able to pick one of whatever you want every turn. Sylveon's whole thing is three of whatever you want every turn. Yeah, so Hampus takes a look at his prize cards now from the Gladian. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see what he takes. Not a card we see too often. Uh, but it's actually a, a, a card that is played a lot in these kind of control decks because they are often relying on low counts of certain cards because they have to have so many different cards to be able to tech for certain matchups. Uh, and we see that I think he's going to take the Guzma out of his prize cards. He, he was kind enough to show us which one he took. Um, he could also have taken... Like, the other one that he could have gone for is something like Body of Dumbbells because it's another two energy yeah, that yeah. Uh, uh, Gonzalo would need uh, on the board for a one-hit knockout because he's not playing any field blur. So that could have been another option. And now his uh, prices have turned around for us. Uh, they are back the, the way up that we would uh, normally read them. So, and he's starting to do this Sylveon thing where you just build up like a gigantic hand size as well. Yeah, because what happens in doing that is your opponent doesn't know which things you've prepared. Yep. They don't know if you have the Skullgrunt. They don't know if you're prepared to take the energy off the board with the Plumeria. They're in this situation where they don't know what they need to play around that turn. Yep. Which can lead to some tough decisions of working out what possible options there are, which one you think is most likely having known the, you know, knowing the player and what kinds of plays they've made, and that's really difficult to do in this game. It is, it is. And as well as that, is like, that all assumes that Gonchalo is like aware of all these crazy one-off techs as well in Hamza's deck. There might be options that Gonchalo doesn't even think about, because who knows what a skeleton list for a Sylveon list looks like off offhand. Um, I know a fair few people who would. Okay, you. Uh, that's a little different. Though, but. <laughs> but I know some strange people who really like Sylvia. Um, so, just a Cynthia this turn, um, which is fine. You know, you can't get any value out of this Guzma. Uh, the Vulcans have already been used, so you can just shuffle and draw. Yeah, and he's going to start putting on pressure with his energy drive here as well. Yeah, at this point, Hampus needs to have already taken some uh, ways to heal, but. That's actually not going to be enough, because if he does so, he can't attack back. Yep. Um, he can Magical Ribbon again, but he won't be able to attack back for a turn, and that just means that Gonzalo can keep putting a little bit of pressure on what, uh, a turn at a time. Mm. Uh, so would you say Hamza's priority here is to get rid of the energy on the active Lele, then? Uh, if he has the resources to do so and heal, that would be great, but he is only playing the two copies of DCE. These decks don't often have to go on the offensive. Yeah. Or the other option of, look, sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice a few cards, a prize cards, early, so that you can get into a position where you can yeah. uh, kind of control the game from later on. It looks like he's going to ace a roll of this one, which is a good way of healing it and conserving that DCE as yep. well. And that and is exactly what he goes for. Now, you might notice as well that Hampus constantly leaves himself with literally no bench, and the only Pokemon he has is this one active Sylveon. And this is a great point and a big part of playing the deck as well. It means that Gonchalo can't play Guzma to get his Pokemon out of the active, because you have to do the first effect of Guzma, then the second one. If you, if you can't do the first effects, 
you cancel with your own Pokemon. And this leaves Hampus in a position where he can just lock things in the active way easier. Yeah, and you know he's even prepared for going, okay, well, you can't Guzma out a bit, and I'll play the Lana Kila to make it even harder for you to move anything. Yep. So, <laughs> you know, you're going to have to play a and fairly the chunky... And for the, for the skateboards. Yeah, and, and he's, like, like, he's making sure things get stuck that people don't want stuck in the active. He's, he's clearly won an awful lot of games by his opponent just drawing and passing because they've got him a cargo stuff right there. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, it could be a pain to play around that because you need to put so, commit some of these support Pokemon that many decks are playing. You know, it's not there's not many decks that just play attacking Pokemon. It's really just like things like Zoro, uh, the Zoroark decks where the support Pokemon is Zoroark, but it also happens to have a really good attack. Yeah, yeah. Um, this this strategy as well, just on this note, is it benefits a lot from rotation because Floatstone came. Uh, yeah, something we lost. So, um, yeah, but at least by having Floatstone, if you did get your Grubbin stuck active, you just got Floatstone. Move that. There's a Rayquaza. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like Sylveon. Sylveon's like really enjoying that his opponents can't do that. So grabbing the Vikavolt from the deck. I believe he has Rare Candy in hand anyway. So yeah. So we'll see another Vikavolt come into play. He also has the Energy Recycler, so he has uh, the one Energy Recycler that he had remaining in his deck in hand. So he's going to wait till there are five Energy in the discard pile, or maybe until he's out and just dump a load back in. Yeah. This lets him kind of extend the amount of turns Hampus has to be reaching for uh, discard, uh, or, uh, you know, energy discard, and not aggressive things or healing cards. Yeah, for sure. It's also worth noting that there is some energy that I think Hampus will be completely content to leave on the board. Um, the thing is, if energy's in his discard, Gonchalo can shuffle it back in with Energy Recycler. If energy's in his deck, he can get it out with Vigbol. If it's on his board on something useless and Hampus is locking something in the active, Gonchalo can't do anything with that energy. Yeah, and basically, as long as he's below 7 energy on board, like, you can guarantee Gonzalo never goes above 7 energy total on board. Yep. The Rayquaza has never taken the knockout. Mm -hmm. And as long as you can keep the Tapu Lele's out of a range of very large energy drives, like the one we're about to see, he can also do the same thing. Yeah. Um, so the manual attachment for the turn goes to the Tapu Lele. So we see 100 damage come down once again onto the active Sylveon. Um, which means basically saying that look if you attach the DCE the one on the bench will come in and finish this off yeah and it's, it's really cool as well because you know Hampus is going to hit everything he needs every turn because that's the point of Magical Ribbon um, so it, it comes down to like first of all it just shows off his skill as a player of these kind of decks and of this one in particular that he's able to make the right decision over and over and again this weekend yep so there was a big there was an awful lot of thinking in the uh, <laughs> before the crushing hammer. I think trying to work out which target he thought was the most valuable. Hmm. Has Gonchalo played his one escape up yet? Uh, he has not, but I think we're about to see the Plea GX. Yeah, we could. That would pick up the Vika Vault and the Lele, I assume, with all the energy on. And again, you're saying that the energy is no good to uh, uh, Gonzalo on the board, uh, but it's also kind of dead in hand he has to like he has to shuffle his hand back in with a load of energy to put it back into the deck to re-accelerate it but he can only attach one from turn, a, a turn and Hampus can definitely keep up knocking those ones off yeah that, it's also why Hampus has such a good matchup against like things like the bull shrine decks that we see is that like they just attach one energy per turn that's exactly what Hampus wants to see and yet we do see play uh, one of the most disruptive GX stacks I think in the game mm. And he has to play it safe, benching that EV. He knows if Gonchalo hits escape rope and like another energy, um, he can energy drive for 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and yeah, he can get the KO that way. Yeah, he's found a way of uh, at least conserving, you know, he stays in the game. Uh, he doesn't get benched in this. Mm. So, you know, we're now 15 minutes into the finals. Is this exactly like the, the, game, plans we, the, the game plans we were talking about earlier on? This is not what we thought we'd be seeing. Nope. <laughs> not, not in any capacity. Yeah, we thought we'd be seeing Rayquazas flying around. I'll, I'll be honest, I was kind of worried that, like, we'd sit down for the final and be like, oh, try and get really excited because it was a Buzz Shrine mirror or something like that, and, and be like, well, it's going to be a bit slow and players are going to be a bit tired. Um, th this is exciting. It's, it's really cool to see Sylveon in the final. Um, but yeah, the, the game plans, you can just see that this is the kind of player, you know, um, at least this is why I'm behind the commentary booth and that's out there in the oh, final, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they've seen a completely different uh, line of play that, uh, to what I have and uh, are just playing to it. They're saying, look, Tapu Lele is the way you beat Sylveon. Yep. Uh, this is actually how a lot of Zoroark decks and a lot of other decks uh, last season were like, yeah, just throw a DCE on. If, start attacking with that because eventually they have to, you know, if they start attacking, you can hit 100. And you can hit 100 and you keep doing it. And yep. eventually they can't do anything about that. 
Well, uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, Handis is going to run out of uh, discard cards at, at some point. Uh, you say this, but he does play Lusamine, so he, oh, actually, he does play Lusamine. He can have an infinite loop. Okay, he's not going to run out of discard cards. Not any time soon, no. So, Conchala opting to get the V Cabalt into the active. Um, Hapas could just do the same thing again, though, or he just attacks it for damage. Yeah, he can hit 150 if he has the energy in hand. He can actually use the Vika Vault's attack. It's just going to double check Mantle Nikita. Only applies to basics, I believe? Uh, it does indeed. So, that Mantle Nikita. Really the fact that Vika Vault's retreat cost is still very large. Yeah, it's still three, but it does mean that he can retreat the, uh, the Vika Vault this turn into the Tapu Lele, energy drive for 100, and take two prize cards. And yeah. do you know what's huge about these two prize cards? If he takes them the way I think he's about to take them, that was an energy recycler. Yep. Uh, and since the uh, the energy cycler he used last didn't get quite full value, he got four of the five back because mm -hmm. there was only four in, in the discard. Having the second one where he will be able to get the full value from them is going to be extremely important. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's it's cool that it's like one of the earlier prize cards that he takes because it's it's the one that's going to let him take more prize cards in the future. So you just see another. <laughs> <laughs> Another, okay, that's fine. I'll just do the same thing. It worked last time, kind exactly. of. Exactly. I'm going to make you burn through your energy by retreating if I have to. So that is one of the Sylveon's double colors energy gun. Um, he doesn't really need to worry about it for plea anymore, obviously, because he's already used that. Um, could could go for the same strategy where he just keeps attacking these Vika Vaults then, I guess? Yeah, he still has the DC in hand. Um, actually, so he has one Sylveon in hand, uh, one Sylveon prize, one in discard now, which means that the next EVs, ev energy evolution will fail. Yeah. Well, and without finding a way of putting the Sylveon back into the deck first, which means he's actually got to be careful that he can't do the same thing of bench the Eevee and wait for it to evolve. He has to, uh, you know, he manually evolve it by, by benching it, but he won't be able to just EV energy evolution to, to set himself up. Yeah, that's true. That could come into play for sure. So... Is that some damage on the Sylveon? Is there a dice on it, or is that just the reflection? I think, I think it's just a reflection. I'm, I'm not sure where the damage. I'm trying to work that out. So there's no way there's, yeah. there's damage <laughs> carries on this uh, Sylveon. I'm just trying to. Yeah. Trying you to never raise strong charge. It's a really good ability. Like, <laughs> so strong charges immediately. I could be looking at doing. I think in Charles following the same line of play that you have, which is just just keep loading up the Slay. Like, and you're seeing it when you summon through the deck there as well. He does play one Marsh Shadow. And the, the, key, the key word there is one. So he's going to be able to disrupt Hamza's whole magical ribbon setup one Once, time yeah. this whole game. And he needs to find that one turn yeah. and make it perfect. And what, he, what he's looking to try and do is try and do that on a turn where he hits the active Sylveon for 100. Yeah. Then plays the Marsh at the same turn. Because that's the turn where Hamza needs to find a way of uh, healing. And he's less likely to do that if he has fewer cards in hand. That's a great point, yeah. So that looks, to, you know, like that, that could be a, a line gone solo could go for is timing the Marshadow to reduce the chances of having heal on the, just the one turn. He only needs one turn to, 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 take, uh, to finish the game out in this, in this current situation. Exactly. Um, Gonchalo's really spreading his energy around the board as well. Um, do you think that's the right play as well? This isn't the normal kind of lines you would take against the Sylveon deck because it means that in denying an energy um, one at a time, he's not removing all of them from one Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, it lets him kind of continue moving forward with his game plan. Um, because, like, both of these Lele's can still retreat. Uh, they can't because of Mount Ma 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 but never mind. Uh, they could otherwise still retreat. And he'd be in a position to attack with both of them with one attachment. Yeah. So, spreading the, the, them around the board means he can almost always find an attacker or the options he needs. Um... It also means that Hampus has to kind of split his efforts in denying energy. Uh, if you touch like too much energy onto the one uh, Lele, he Hampus can just go on the aggressive, take the knockout on that. Yeah, and then he's lost. And then he just loses like points. five or six energy if he wants to commit that. You know, he would commit that many. So by kind of keeping the um, energy amount on each fairly low, but all over the place, it kind of uh, pr pr like denies Hampus uh, some options. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's. He can either have one thing that's just doing an absolute ton of damage, or he can have one thing that's just doing damage consistently over and over again. Like you were saying about the Zoroark, it doesn't necessarily matter if you're not one shotting it, it's just more, you just want to keep hitting it, and that's got to be your priority, surely. Yeah, so there's only one energy retrieval left for Gonzalo. Yeah, he's going to play it now. 
Um, he does really want to see this get the full five back, though, if he can. He only got four at the first one as well. And he only got four on this one, which means, of the, you know, basically, in terms of the total ten energy he could have recovered, he's only actually recovered eight. Yeah, and this sounds really pedantic, I'm sure, but we it, it really is, it does come down to it. Like, he's got one grass prize, and that actually might... Yeah, you know, like, like, these are the kind of games where every single one of his 14 energy, he's playing a 7-7 seven, seven split, counts. Yeah. Like, until you get to the point where you're like, okay, I actually really needed all of these energy to make, to make some of these plays. That sucks. Yeah. Um, we could also see, maybe we can start waiting for a turn where, because there's now still a lot of energy on board. There's already four in play. He can play another two. Um, and he could be in a position where he um, might be trying to slowly build up for a surprise Rayquaza. That's true as well. Um, he could do that thing that you were saying with the Marsh Out at the same time and just have one incredible turn where he goes, Marsh Out at a four and Rayquaza and uh, we're seeing it. <laughs> So, Plumeria here, by the way. So, the Plumeria. Uh, Hampus is also playing a copy of Counter Catcher. So, he could be looking to, to, to kind of deny some energy and then Counter Catcher yeah. up the something. I really like Counter Catcher in this list because you never really expect to be ahead on prizes. No, you're pretty used to being behind. Yeah. Um, and we see uh, one of the cards that Hampus took there was the Max Potion, so he's clearly expecting an attack to come through from Gonzalo this turn. Um, or at least at this point, I mean, his hand's like. 30 cards. Yeah, it's a pretty big <laughs> he, hand. He probably already has what he needs, but next he's just like, we'll take all the max potions I can get because I'll just protect myself. Oh, so it's actually, so. this used to be a problem So for Sylveon. Of you actually have to work out when you can stop magical ribboning for a few turns because otherwise you can deck out. Yeah. Um, he is playing the copy of resource management Orango so he can keep putting things back. But Gonzalo will find KOing the Oranguru a lot easier than he does KOing the Sylveon. Is actually not but no, he's not. So it's just the poor you know, So, you know, he's got to be careful that he doesn't find a way of decking out. Does he have any... Um, is, he has Judge as like a, to shuffle his hand back into his, his deck. Yeah. But that does the same thing for his opponent sometimes. Well. Yeah, so he, maybe that might be an option of like he can keep going and just, eventually just shuffle his hand back in. It's a little different to more other mill decks because it does have that X growing condition of you can just fairy wind and take KOs very slowly. Um... So the deck out is not maybe not as much of a problem for some other thing as it could be for some other things. So that was a mysterious treasure, I believe, from Gonzalo. Looks like it, yes. And this is the turn he wants to commit his uh, Marsh Shadow. Yeah. So if you can find, so no one worries about deck out for Hampus. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this turn, Hampus loses a lot of resources. So if an attack does go through from Gonzalo, it's this is the turn where the damage is most likely to stick. Yeah. Uh, um, the let loose ability we've seen it a lot this weekend we have uh, it's it's a draw card for yourself kind of as well but it's also a disruption card it's, it does a lot of things in one card I think it's mystery treasure searchable as well so it's nice and consistent um, I like it a lot yeah so actually so looking at uh, Sampus's hand he did get the max potion and the fairy energy Ooh. so even an attack uh, would you know even if it did connect with an attack this turn it wouldn't actually stick yeah and in order to connect with an attack this turn he'd either need to retreat this Vika Vault and energy drive for very little damage or find he still has that one escape rope he's really holding on to this yeah he's got to find it eventually um, so we see another Gladion you know every time you play Gladion the next prize you take is always Gladion <laughs> in my experience it's a bit like Acrobite like that and now he gets to choose a different card and he's going with the bodybuilding dumbbells yep um, basically deciding look now you need an awful lot of damage. Like mm. it's not a two-hit knockout. If I even if I touch the DCE, it's a three, and yeah. that's a big difference in this game because you'll find turn there somewhere to heal. I also just want to point out there's always this really awkward part when you play Gladion in, in an event because you have to hand your prizes to your opponent. Say, do you want do you want to cut my my prizes? <laughs> and it's always like, and most of them say no. It's it's six cards. I trust you. Yeah. And Hampus is. I'm just going to declare the magical ribbon. Um, yeah. He's probably fed up of saying those words uh, <laughs> after this entire weekend. I bet he's not. No, he probably loves it. <laughs> I bet, I bet he's he probably his finds it really fun. Collection of words. Uh, yeah, he's at the very least he's got used to saying it. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be interesting to see what he goes for. Probably looking to yep, the character catcher seems like a, a nice thing, and then going into the lucamine so he can start looping, I believe. Try and set that up over a couple of turns. Yeah, this main uh, card we see, um, we saw it in that Waylord Steelix list as well. Um, it, it has that looping thing that you're talking about. Uh, do you want to explain that a little bit? Yeah, so if you have one Lucimine already in the discard, um, so you play the first Lucimine to grab two supporters or a stadium if, that you want, and then the second Lucimine, you target one of your targets is the first Lucimine and another supporter. 
And this means that you keep that cycle going of every other turn playing the supporter you're taking back, and then the turns in between you're playing the looser mean to keep grabbing them back. So it kind of gives you infinite resources to kind of discard cards or to kind of search for things or ace a roller. Um, so it can be a really tricky card to play around because your opponent knows that no matter what you do, you almost always like you will almost always have the Pumeria every yeah. other turn. And again, with a lot of recovery cards and stuff like Puzzle of Time as well, going going out of the uh, out of the format, it's like loot any card that recovers from the discard pile now. Just it feels like it just becomes automatically better because there's so there's fewer of them that do it nowadays. Yeah, so you can see both people have you know, both players have really you can see you can see that the hands have gone to the heads of going, <laughs> huh? Now what? Yeah. Because they kind of got into this weird stalemate, weird stalemate now of. Hampus has kind of negotiated this in such a way that he can. Do, do you think that weird keep stalemate tonight? is like exactly what Hampus wants, though? Because I mean, if his opponent isn't really doing anything actively, and Hampus is still able to discard every energy turn, er, energy every turn. Yeah, uh, well, and he know, he probably knows. We, we, I don't think he knows that Gonzalez is only playing the two energy recycler, but he can start. No, the things he discards now stay gone. Yep, absolutely. And that's a huge factor. Um, like so a can, really can big deal. How many energy does he have on his board? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six energy, right? Yeah, and there's a couple in the discard now as well. So he's moving towards kind of there's less energy left in deck than there is uh, in play. Yeah. And that's uh, these are all counts that I'm sure Hampus has in his head right now because it's exactly what you need to be taking note of as a Sylveon player. Well, so this is the thing. So Gonzalo's playing a very interesting attacking lineup in his list. But his energy count and a lot of his supporters and uh, items are pretty typical. Yeah, it's not actually that crazy of a ray list outside of the Pokemon. Um, maybe the escape rope is a little bit um, uncommon at the very least. Uh, and Steven's Resolve, of course, is not something everybody plays. Um, but, you know, the energy count, Hampus will be going, okay, right, 14. Once I get to 14, I yep. slap a DCE and I can switch up the attack for a few turns and de declare fairy win because my opponent has nothing. Yeah. I mean, in reality, Gonzalo is very likely to just scoop if that ever gets to that point <laughs> because he doesn't really want to have to spend 30 minutes sitting there going, fairy wind, fairy wind. Yeah. He'd rather just get on with the next game. And the other thing is, Gonzalo has to make sure that he has, if he's going for your plan that you said earlier about, um, he's just going to come in with a huge ray at some point and then just take the KO because of all this energy that is staying on his board. Um, if he's going for that plan, he needs to make sure that he ha actually has the three energy in his deck to be able to put them on the ray and that they're not somewhere else on his board or discard pile. Yeah. And Skullgrim coming down just after he... He hits it. one. That's all he needed. He, he, That's he, good. He'll take that. He also can see two Guzma, which is actually good information because he knows that benching an Eevee is a risk. Gonzalo's probably not going to use Stormy Winds at any point this game. That would only would accelerate be. things well, yeah. um, in terms of decking out, and he, I don't he, think that's on his uh, list of things he would like to do. Yeah, unless he's getting a KO with it, I guess. But. Now, and what we see is the other way of kind of keeping the infinite loop of supporters going is we see one of the pal pads uh, he's playing. I think uh, he's only playing the one copy of the pal pad yeah. Pampers. He but just pal padded back in uh, Two Plume Area, which is the greatest pal pad I've ever seen. And then you know he pal pads those back in, and then I guess he probably <laughs> just goes magical ribbon, Two Plume Area, and up. something else. And yeah, the discard um, effect of Flumeria can really hurt you as well. It means you, it says you have to discard two cards from your hand, but again, just discard supporters and lose them and loop them. Like, yeah, he's just kind of like, yeah, cool, free Flumeria. <laughs> also, I'm just gonna keep cycling forever. Don't mind me. Yeah. So, so one, two, three energy left in Gonzalo's deck. Uh, you including the one that's prized? I am not including the one that's prized. So okay, so there's not much left for him in terms of attachments, and it's just. They're not in places that are really scary. Perhaps. The other weird thing is, like, again, I, I'm talking about the ray attack a lot, but it, it's grass lightning colors, and he's got a grass and two lightning left, so if Hampus just gets rid of the grass, he's fine. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the ray is never a threat. Yeah. So Gonzalo's really having to think really hard about this one. Um, I think just on paper, like, the way everything's set up so far, it feels like Hampus has to have been confident going into this matchup. Well, he wasn't. I was talking to him and he was yeah. like, oh, it can be pretty tough. Like, I, if they get a good start, I'm not then seeing it's, it. like... it's pretty tricky. Um, the, you know, he's like, I'm not really prepared to, well, you know, he was prepared for the deck, but he was like, yeah, it's not the best matchup for me. Yeah. So, Gonzalo's gone for Steven, Steven's resolve. And the cool thing here is, he's 
if he just plays escape rope Rayquaza attach strong charge that's game like I mean it's a lot it's a big combo but he did just play Steven's resolve yeah so he has all the cards in hand I believe Hampus took a duo job as last magical ribbon though if I saw correctly yeah interesting um, the trick is though is he needs to judge and then magical ribbon for what he needs yeah and what happens in these games is the magical ribbon decisions are from what you've seen your opponent already have, has yeah. played and what you know they need to do to beat you. Yeah. Hampus does have another um, EV and Fairy energy in here. Like, I mean, if he's thinking that worst case scenario, a big Mars. Uh, and you saw this coming huge. You, you, you oh, didn't see. Yeah, yeah. So, so he shuffles, and then you basically number the cards randomly, and you roll to see what you hit. Or you can just pick randomly like that. Perfect. So, what was it? It it's was a lightning energy. energy. So, <laughs> you could wow. see Hampus like, whew, that was close. So. I never thought I would see a big Mars in a final of a major tournament, but here we are. So, that, that's, a, that's really one of like, the best thing Hampus could have picked out, I imagine. Uh, the escape probe was the other one he was probably true, really true. hoping to hit. But basically, if Gonzalo can find Ray energy, Pika, he's good. I, I don't think he has enough. Left, like, I don't think he does. I think hitting that lightning. I think that like I think genuinely swings the entire has game. Is one grass and one lightning. Now. Yeah, it's going to have to be Lele if, he, if he's going to continue this game plan. Uh, but the Lele is just not efficient because of the uh, bodybuilding dumbbells. You'd have to sack so much energy on it. You would. You would. You're, you're two hit knockouting, but they also two hit knockout you. So it's just not really worth trying to commit to. Mm. <laughs> Look at the size of Hampus's hand. Yeah. Now Hampus doesn't know that Gonzalo's um, has that energy prized. So, like, he's still going to think about this gigantic ray play. Um, but he's a little bit safer than he's probably worried about. Yeah, if he, honestly, if he missed that energy, that would have been a, a really huge, uh, like, turn from Gonzalo going, ray, this, that. Yeah. Um, so he obviously gets the attachment from the discard pile when he plays the ray down. He can mill himself a three. He, That's I think he has free. to now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it depends on exactly what energy is left in deck. Um, he will know better than we do. Um, he said no ability. Wins, no. That was an interesting decision. Yep. If he did, he had the escape open hand and would have been able to take the knockout. Yeah, maybe that's just maybe that was a small misplay on Gonzalo's part. I think. I wonder. We'll see, maybe he miscounted his energy last turn. Um, but if he played the ability, he would have been able to take the knockout. I think because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That would be three hundred and thirty damage. I think no, that might do yeah. it. Um, <laughs> Hampus, in, in that sense, Hampus took a little bit of a risk not benching that Eevee and the, and the Fairy Energy last turn. Um, but maybe Hampus doesn't know Gonzalo plays Escape Rope is the other thing. This is also kind of likely... Again, it is not a, it's not a common card to see in these lists. So yeah, what does Gonzalo do from this point onwards? It, they have to go on the Lele here, surely. They do... He's got he sees the escape pro. It's really funny because he's got three Guzma in his hand. <laughs> yeah, he was prepared for that EV. Um, he's trying to count something out of what would have happened if I'd used Stormy Winds because he could have he could have milled himself down. That would have been fine. Yeah. Um, it would have been fine because he would have won. Yeah, turn. he would have won on the same turn. Yeah, he could he could have decked himself out and it would have been okay. Yeah. But we just see it's a, it, it is an energy draft for one twenty, but. It's just 120. And there's the again, and looks like Gonzalo's just going to scoop that. Yep, game. and go into game two. 40 minutes left. Two more games. Um, Sylveon does take longer games, so I think it, Hampus is in a great position. Yeah, having already won a game one that was already uh, kind of the majority of a normal round, he knows he's won up. He knows Gonzalo is going to have to change up maybe his strategy. Um, and you might try and like do it in a slightly more aggressive way using the Rayquazas to take the knockouts yeah this is the thing as well because like when you're playing against Sylveon or again like pretty much any rogue it's game one is that getting information and, and learning like what your opponent's doing and, and everything like that and like I've never tested this matchup so I'm gonna you know you, you, you're probably gonna make misplays at some point it's just natural um, but game two and three especially when we've had the extended timers Gonzalo is gonna be a lot more optimal I would, I would imagine mm-hmm <laughs> Um, so now he's had a bit of time to think about the matchup. Um, what do you think Gonzalo's approach 
could be. I don't think too. I don't think he was actually that bad um, in the last game, and I think he he was he had the right idea with holding that one escape rope. Hampus still has no idea that Gonzalo plays that, and it could come out and surprise him and take him a game. Here. He did play it to attack with the Lele for 120. Did, oh, he did play it at the end of that game. You're right. So that's he, great information he, for Hampus. Yeah. So Hampus has seen that as an extra card. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the mind the mind games going on for the, for this for this set is crazy. Well, this is actually a big factor for Sylveon. Normally, is you aren't having to do these mind games mm. because your opponent should normally kind of adjust their play on what they assume you've taken from the magical ribbon, which means you actually need to be like taking things from what the play would be and you could be like there's like layers of bluffing on top of like yeah yeah of like okay well what do you think that they took they take that or did they take the thing that would beat the thing if i played as if they took the th and just after and so on and so forth um so energy prized again for gonzalo two grass two energy already done. gone uh and hammer's back with the upside down prizes but he can play his prizes however he wants at this point <laughs> i don't mind uh, the two Acer Roller are both prized. There's yeah. only the one Acer Roller left. Again, though, this is where Gladion really comes in, isn't it? Yeah, this is a case of he can just play the Gladion, grab the Acer Roller, and off he goes. Is that a Kukui in his prizes as well? Uh, it's interesting that he's playing the Kukui because Fairy Wind with the extra 20 uh, does 130. And as you know, as we may have learned all weekend, is that 130 is a cool number to hit. It's got KOs on that Buzzwall, Shining Lugia if it ever comes down. Um, probably just fixes some math and gets some surprise donks basically out of nowhere. Yeah, he gets to, to have the chance to kind of manipulate the board state by cheating the thing, by evolving for <laughs> turn one, right? Yeah, completely. And if he can't do that, his deck is just too far behind. Like, yeah. your opponent can, well, it can come back to it as long as you see it, but the, the odds of a donk or, you know, just carrying the, the, just the EV are a little bit too high for most people's uh, comfort. And, and one out for Gonchalo is just from the best of three format standpoint, one out that he could have here is if he does get an Eevee dunk at any, like in this game or the next one, if he ends up winning this one, like that's what's going to get him the win in the time because these games are going to be long and having like, if Gonchalo wins this one, having time for a game three might be a little bit difficult. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. You'd get a full game three done anyway and okay. then I have to remember what the rules are on... <laughs> we'll, you know, we'll cross that bridge <laughs> into it. Um, you know, if anyone is aware, please do let us know in the chat. False alarm on the donk, though. Hampus does have the fairy energy. Oh, well, there we go. Straight away. To evolve it. Um, into the Sylveon. And can start grabbing cards from his deck, because he is going second. He is. Um, so he can declare the Magical Ribbon straight away and keep just setting up. It's like Steven's resolve every turn. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Um, I mean, one of them is a supporter, so you can also, you know... It's better it, it, than Steven's result yeah. every turn. So, you know, you can play a supporter and then Magical Ribbon. Did he just play a Kukui and is he playing multiple Kukui? Um, I believe he is playing two. Um, because it hits 130 then with Fairy Wind, so it takes a knockout and a Buzzwall. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's a suitable situation. The two counter thing tells me that like, it, that's an important enough thing that he, he realised that he actually has to play that many of them. Um, but it's also sometimes just being able to draw two cards. Yeah. Mars um, is in the deck for the same reason, I imagine. Yeah, and like, for surprise energy removal. <laughs> wait, the entirely random energy removal that he hit, <laughs> yeah. which was insane. Yeah. Um. So. All right. We have got back to Gonzalo. I didn't see what he took on the magic ribbon that turn, and a second Tapu Lele comes into play. It looks like he might be going for a very similar line as to last time. Yeah. Like, like I said, I don't think he actually did anything too wrong. He was able to get a lot of energy on his board. He was able to build up a good state where Rayquaza could come in and take these huge KOs. Um, he just unfortunately wasn't able to pull off that last part. So Vulcan for Rare Candy, one of the most popular um, combos we see so far in these decks. Uh, Vulcan really helps these decks out. Yep. Grabbing the Rare Candy. Um, you know, it's a skeleton plus energy um, in these decks. So... He can get something to get guaranteed an attachment, and he can start uh, you know, getting the item cards that he needs. There are lots of item cards that he wants to be able to play uh, to help him set, he, himself set up. He could chip for 60 here, or he could just start spreading his energy. It's probably a little harder for Sylveon to recover from the early game damage chips in the early game, maybe? or Yeah, so it just means that he has to start using things like the, uh, <laughs> the Max Potions and the Acer Roller that is currently in deck. It kind of means, okay, right, you have to start using them now. Yeah. And you really don't want them to get to that. Um, so, we will, you know, you need to keep max potions and the healing cards available throughout the game. Yeah. 
And is this going to be a turn two plea? <laughs> it could well be. Yeah, he's going for it. Taking the Vigavolt off the board immediately. Um, I don't think he could risk it. Because if he leaves the Vigavolt there and Gonchalo's able to retreat, he just puts two energy on the Lele and gets KO. Or not even because uh, Hamps has the DC on Sylveon now. Yeah. Um, he needs to find two attachments, but obviously he can't do that. He's not playing any copies of DCE. Yep. Um, How frustrating must it be to Valkner for a rare candy? You get your Vika Vault in play, and then oh, I have to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> he's got all, he got Ultra Ball for Lele for Valkner. He's got the Lele in hand, even. So, an Ultra Ball gets rid of an Ultra Ball and the Vika Vault that just went back to hand. Yep. Um, Ultra Balls are a little more painful in this match than they are in others because it's just three less cards in your deck and. That's always good for a mill deck. Yeah, and Gonzalo is kind of in a bit of time pressure. He needs to kind of win this game. Yeah, he, um, he probably has to start taking risks in that case. Um, because obviously, so just uh, had it confirmed that in the case of timeout, uh, if more than 50% prizes are taken um, by one of the players, the player who took more prize cards wins. That's how you mark a completed game. Um, and if not, you go into a sudden death with one prize card and whoever takes it first wins. Yeah. Uh, which must be one of the most single nerve-wracking experiences. <laughs> I think in Prague it happened twice on stream. Yeah, um, and I can just remember like seeing the commentators, and they were just completely frazzled after the games. In this situation, which deck would you favour? Would you favour Sylveon, which can just magical urban for easy and put the pressure on immediately, or would you favour Gonzalo, who could just potentially don Ganevi or just get this crazy turn two going? Um. I think you want to be trying to set yourself up because you know long term please gone yep the board will stick yeah so you need to get yeah, like now you can start building like if you can get to two Vika Volts you're throwing four energy on the board at two yeah and, and that's going to be tough to deal with yeah I don't think Hampers can knock quite that many off uh, that was a very vigorous dice roll yeah uh, <laughs> heads anyway though yep discards the um, first energy uh, should we really be keeping count of how many energy have been uh, knocked off? But I'm well, sure we'll be able to work that out. I as feel we go. like it's more relevant as well after Conchado has played his, uh, his his energy recyclers. Yeah, and like you were saying in the last game, like oh he's only got like um, four with each energy recycler, and like we were talking about how pedantic it was, but like it, it actually if, he, if he'd actually end. got an extra energy if or something, he, like if the extra energies had been in deck, he would have been able. You know, he was more likely to have one in hand. Um, so we will see exactly how he wants to yeah, keep this game moving forward. Grabbing a Max Potion of Plumeria and the Fairy Energy. So the Max Potion and the Fairy Energy are a standard combo. Plumeria is just to keep up some disruption uh, along at the same time. Yeah, so Hampus there grabbing three cards with the Magical Ribbon. If he's grabbing Max Potion and Fairy Energy, um, he expects to take the hit here, uh, and he, as he most likely will now. Yep. As we see, the second Vika, you know, the Vika Vault come down once again, um, having been peed away once. Um, what Garcia may not be aware of is that that Grubbin on the bench is not able to evolve because one has been knocked out and the other one isn't the prize cards. Oh, that's true, actually. So yeah. there's actually the only one Vika Vault is, a, is an option for him. You can see he's now trying to weigh up exactly okay, which energy he wanted to put on because he was like, I had one grass discarded and. We need yeah. to keep going. So now we go to Marshadow. This, this is cool in my opinion because it means that if Hampus just draws really badly off his Marshadow, Gonzalo can just strong charge the Lele and win the game. Hang on. So he does 80 this turn and then it would be 120 next turn. Yes, yeah, so he would. Yeah. So if, he, if, uh, if Hampus misses a Max Potion this turn, having already played one of the four, um, and a fairly large deck size still, he would be able to, yeah. And it will win him the game. game pretty quickly as well. Hampus opting not to look at his hand, and I like that. He's got, like, he's got oh, he's got it. He right had there. it. <laughs> Who even needs Magical Ribbon, honestly? Like, um, we'll see the first Crushing Hammer. Um. <laughs> I like that he's playing the hammers before the Max Potion, just to, like, again, that's a mind game thing. You can play the Max Potion first to be like, yeah, I'll just heal up. But And you can see now he's actually after the grass energy. He's prioritized and taking out one type of energy because he knows mm -hmm. that then that means the Vigavolt can only grab one per turn. And Hampus is like, I don't think he has the fairy energy in hand is the issue. And he drew both Sylveon <laughs> as well. He, so if he... What a, what a decision he has here to make. So he has to... So he could opt to... So by doing... So he's gone for the Magical Ribbon, so he's opting not to play the... the uh, to play the Max Potion because he's going, look, we'd need to see Strong Charge 
plus attachment from hand. Yeah, and that's not that difficult for Gallo to achieve, though. Surely, if he just hits one energy off off something, he's going to do it. Yeah, but this is the thing: is that Hampus has gone. Okay, right. The odds are he's got two energy here, and gonzalo has got it in hand. He's got the game here. Okay, so we so. Um, would have been tempted to kind of just show that and go right okay cool half hour for the last game let's go yeah, especially because he's the one who should really like he he's going to need to win these games quickly right yep like, he actually top decks the, another grass so <laughs> that could actually be a bad hopefully thing hopefully he still has still, zoom in there. yeah as long as he still has another grass <laughs> he, in deck he does, he does. Um, still taking the time to shuffle even though he's about to throw the, down the last grass energy <laughs> um, and be able to hit for 120 for the knockout yeah um, I, I hope I assume he's done the same math that we have yeah, and there yep. it is. And there it is. Of we're going to game three in the finals. Yeah. Well, you know, we do like living on the edge here at Limitless. <laughs> we, uh, we we do like having an exciting final. And I think going to game three in a Sylveon versus Ray Plaza is unexpected. It sure. definitely yeah. was not what we were expecting to see in the final. And it's going to be a really interesting thing because we've seen both ends here. We've yeah. seen if uh, Hampus is able to kind of grind out the early turns and stop a good setup from Gonzalo, or Gonzalo gets slightly unlucky with some of his draws he's able to kind of grind the game out and slowly start denying the energy to the point where Gonzalo runs out. I, I want to talk about Hampus' last turn as well a little. When he had that max potion in hand, he couldn't prevent that KO. Um, he basically, what he, what he said there was, if he max potions, he's not going to be able to magic rip because he has to discard the energy. So then, uh, Gonzalo does the attack and Gonzalo will be two shotting him at this point because he'll get more strong charges into play. Um, so he'd need to max potion and get a really good top deck and he thought that was less likely yep. than Gonzalo just having an energy in hand. And uh, it's also the thing of, if Gon uh, Gonzalo ha still has the energy hand, he doesn't mind because it means it's, the game was over pretty quickly. Which yep. means he can go to the longer game three, which suits him. And drag it out. And, and try, it try and drag it out and try and uh, win via the normal kind of denial of the energy and kind of set, uh, you know, and then start attacking. Yeah, definitely. So both players making sure they've like, really shuffled up um, well, you know. Don't want to be starting in a prize disadvantage because you didn't shuffle well enough in the last game of the tournament. Ideally, no. Yeah. Um, um, tension's so, got to be high as well here. Yeah, both players are going to have to make a lot of really awkward decisions. Um, okay. Oh, we're back. We're back. Yeah. <laughs> then all that happened. Our, our logo froze for a moment. And Hampus is going to have to take these mulligans very quickly. Which is. Yeah, Gonzalo's Probably just trying to, to decide what he wants to start. He has the Ray in hand, so maybe this is the game where he goes for the slightly more aggressive... Uh, Tempest aggressive GX way doesn't seem things. like a bad idea against Silviano. I will say that much. It doesn't seem like the best idea, I'm going to be honest. Mm. Discard your hand and draw 10. Not great against a mill deck. Three energy prized! Okay! So there are only 11 and one, left. And one of the rare candy as well, which could come up. But three energy in the prizes. Again, this is it's all it's a little weird as well because Hampus never has this knowledge. He always has to assume worst case scenario when Charles got access to fourteen. Yep. So okay, I'm going to do a count of energy remaining. That would be excellent. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Hampus opens EV fairy energy um, to the delight of everyone watching the stream. I'm sure. It's also just because like it, it's great because the only we talk about like oh I want all the I want both decks to set up to have a good stream game. Um, wait, I was going for the judge as well. Um, Hampus is set up we, like er, lots of people set up oh I'll Lily Frey or oh I'll Steven Resolve or oh I'll get Buzzwall attach an energy Hampus is set up as just EV energy yep and, he's, and he's good it's, to go. it's I, well I only play this basic and I play enough energy that I really am unlikely to miss so I'm set up now thanks yep. let's go and the judge turn one with the shining Lugia in the active he can magical run pretty easy Ikuku it's turn one of course but <laughs> yeah if Gonzalo struggles to find a basic oh, okay. he, he finds well, the grab immediately Rare um, Candy and hand but I think it's other two cards and like I see two energy and a rare candy in his hand. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be no a lot going on. Uh, just the attachment. Yeah, it's just two energy and a rare candy. And back like, now to Hampus. Well, he, he has the DCE off of the uh, off of the draw. So if he also hit the Kakui, <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> it would probably be the single craziest uh, judge and uh, uh, you know himself. One of his two DCE, one of his two Kakui. Uh, Lose to me as well for judge. Okay, so he's just going to grab it out and go for the magical ribbon. Yeah. And just deny the price, the uh, attachments because he knows, realistically speaking, Shining uh, Lugia does need a few turns to be powered up. Yeah. So and he can just keep knocking them off. And it doesn't like change. Like, if he had attached that DZE and done the 110 to Lugia, he would have had to do it again next turn to get the KO and he wouldn't have gotten a magical ribbon. This way he gets a magical ribbon. Um, I would assume he's grabbing Kukui and that way he still gets the KO 
and he gets a magical ribbon. Like, yeah. It's just the much more efficient play. And justifying the two Kukui in his list, for sure. Yeah. He, so he, 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 he did see that he grabbed the Kukui. He already had the DC in hand. Gonchalo needs a great top deck here, though. Um, uh, okay, wouldn't be, well, that'll, that'll do it. That'll do it. You can see a little shake of the head from Hampus. is like, great, thanks, <laughs> Cynthia. Um, and, you know, that, that is, means it's very unlikely Hampus is able to go knock out, deny the, knock, and, you know, take up the energy off the Vika Vault and kind of stick it. But um, he had to take the chance for sure. Yeah. He, you know, if he could take the aggressive route in some of these games, I think that's definitely part of the plan. Ultra Ball in Gonchalo's hand. Uh, he's tempted to play it now as well. I was thinking maybe he could save it for a Lele and then grab Volkner because he's also got the big Vault in his hand too. But he's thinking about playing it now. Um, I wonder what he'd get if he did play it now. I think he still goes for the Lele and the Volkner. Um, because he can then set up the Vika Vault. Well, he has seen Hampus just lose me. And this is true, well. so it doesn't really matter. So whatever he takes off this Ultra Ball, he has to immediately play down. Otherwise, it's just going to go back in the deck. Mm. Uh, unless Hampus still goes with the DCE Kikui option. He could grab another Grubbin if he's afraid that Hampus grabbed, like, Guzma DCE, maybe? Um, Gonzalo has seen the Kukui at this point, because I remember Hampus just played it to draw cards, I think, at some point. Yeah, th that might well be the case. Getting the Lele on the board isn't so bad, though, either, because um, he's probably fearing the judge regardless. Yep. Because he just assumes, like, Hampus took it to hand. You know, it's the natural reaction. Um, so getting the Lele on the board is like, well, I want to attack with this, so I, I, I want access to it. Exactly. Gonzalo has very much been in the situation where he's used the Lele as his primary attacker in this matchup, fearing that, well, you know, the fact that he isn't very weak, unlike the Rayquaza, and does a little bit more damage because he can keep stacking energy on so he can kind of get to bigger numbers quicker mm. than some of the other options. So he still plays it, he still plays on the one to tag. Right. Yeah. And if he grabs Volkner, I assume that plays Judge. Yeah, it seems very likely. Yeah. Um, we could even see something like DCE just to get the DCE down, ready for later. He yeah, knows of he's, course. He, he knows Gonzalo doesn't have any space in the list for anything like E-Hammer. So and a knock in next turn seems pretty unlikely. Yeah. Well, he, he'd need an awful lot of things and... He's going to be judging him, so he's not going to. Yep. Like, it's very unlikely he has many of these things. And as, oh, he's got the Guzma. He is going to pick off the Grubbin and punish Gonzalo for not actually taking a second Grubbin um, with that Ultra Ball. Um, that's really cool, though, isn't it? Like, I mean, you lose a mean for Judge, and like, it's such a mind game to then play a completely different sub order. Like, because if Gonzalo <coughs> thinks he's going to get judged, he should get the Lele. But if he thinks he's going to get Guzma, he should get another Grubbin. He, he can't win either way. Well, so I know a lot of people don't like Sylveon as a deck because it isn't particularly engaging to play against. That is true, but it is one of the single most skillful decks because you have every turn you make three decisions, and that's bef with just your attack. All the other decisions you make, like which energy you're trying to knock off, do you go which supporter you wish to use, you know, there are a lot of other things you have to consider. So it's a very skill-intensive deck. Yeah, no, I, I don't think anyone should underrate that. This is a hard deck to play, and Hampus is clearly incredibly good at. It. Especially having taken like a few years off and then coming back to play yeah. Sylveon is quite impressive. Yeah. You know, you know, it shows yeah, a absolutely. good understanding you of the actual game. And Guzma also punishes the Volkner pretty hard because, well, he's not going to get rare candy with it now, is he? This is true. It now means that this Volkner is probably for a nest ball so he can put a Grubbin back down. And Hampus is always going to win the game if there's no Vika Vault on Gonzalo's side of the board. Uh, so he goes for the Mysterious Treasure. Yeah, we're noting we also we still haven't seen Plea GX this game as well, so that's another way he can take care of a Vika Vault out. So... By my count, there's six total energy have been used, I think, mm -hmm. so far. There's one in the discard, two in play. Oh, no, five. Yeah. So, we're moving slowly through Gonzalo's So, there's one in the discard, two in play, and you're counting the three in the prizes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, the total count of energy available uh, to him in, in this game. So, grabs himself a Tapu Lele. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from the fact he's shuffling, it seems like he's... He might have skipped the wonder tag. He probably just has a Cynthia in hand or something. Yeah, just wants to play it down so he has another Lele to start Usually attacking with. Usually you use these mystery treasures for Rayquazas and stuff, but again, it's not something he wants to put down now. Oh, his hand is just... It's just a Vika Vault as well. Mm, okay, so... He played the Vulcanet this turn, though. Yeah, I know. So, he, so. so what he's done is by holding the Lele, he can consider it next turn. Yes, he could have yeah. also held the Mysterious Treasure. He could have drawn into a, a, a different supporter. So now Ampus is going to take a turn... 
Because he already has the two attachments in on the Sylveon. There's no damage on it. So he can actually use the attachment on this turn mm. to get his Sylveon out. Can I get a check on how many Nest Ball Hampers plays as well, actually? So he's uh, playing... Just the one. Yeah, okay. yeah, just the one. That's, I wonder what kind of playtesting he did like, to come to that conclusion, actually. Well, so the decision is, is it's basically a fifth Eevee. And that's all you need it to be. Because you always start one. It just means that you don't have to... Like, if you, instead of drawing into it, you can just Nest Ball instead. Mm. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Because you, you can always evolve into it. I uh, give the Sylveon instantly anyway. So, just double checking he doesn't want to play anything else from his uh, hand this turn. And I kind of half shuffled. And I was like, okay, now actually, let's just Magical Ribbon. That's it's going to be a like, Ribbon. It's yeah. going to be another one, one of those turns. Still has that Georgian hand. Let's not forget about that. Um, we'll have a look and see what he's going to get off this one then. Guzma, Guzma, and DCE. Okay. So that's basically... Okay, the things on the bench don't like those. They need to go away. And I will find ways of getting rid of them one way or another. Um, I think it's interesting, first of all, that Hampus decided to play the other e uh, Sylveon down um, and get that on the board. But it's also interesting to know um, that he got two Guzmas. Because in my like that shows me that he's planning ahead, not just for the next turn, but like for the next... like many turns you know what I mean um, so searching through the deck you can actually see that I think all four of Gonzalo's uh, Ray Posit are still in there oh yeah um, he's just kind of like we haven't seen him play one we did also just see Hampus Reed uh, Shaman it's not going to come up too much unless we see a flippity flap or something but um, a lot of people probably read Gonzalo's Shaman today um, so they're in the situation where okay so what's the grabbing is the Marshadow and they grab it and kick it back in uh, so, opting to one, two, three, four, five, six. That's too many cards on the bench. So he cannot play the Marshall Dan. That just stays mm -hmm. in hand. Oh, and he played the Grubbin before, so that has to stick. Oh, yep. ha that's incredibly unfortunate. Um, but Hampus taking the double Guzma is that basically these two Vika Volts, oh, the, the two Grubbins on back-to-back -back turns. He's going to be looking to go Guzma DCE. That one's down. Guzma, DCE, if you miss the Rick Handy, that one's gone. And if not, he's going to go Guzma, some, like, something else, plea, and it's gone anyway. He doesn't really care where it winds up. So Gonzalo's top deck just it has to be DCE, right? <laughs> or not DCE, I mean um, Rick Handy. Yeah, like, otherwise he's... Rick Handy, yeah, right? otherwise all of his Grubbins are gone. He's got a really low hand size. He can't retreat because of the Mantlan Aquila. <laughs> Which he's finding out now, I guess. No, I think he's trying to play retreat, so someone needs to make sure that they catch the Magnan Aquila. The judge, the judge uh, has indeed called that. Um, immediately on it. Not, um, not a ruling that comes up very often, but Magnan Aquila putting in work there for Hampus. And again, with no field blower running around. Yeah, that's that, just going to stick there. There's no outs to it. It's in there all game. And goes my up And here we go with... Take the DCE off the, off the Magical Ribbon. That's a KO. One Grubbin gone. Off the board. Uh, that, that's two Volt uh, Grubbin in the discard pile already. I yep. And <laughs> there's only one left, and there it's sat. Yep. And I know, Hampus probably knows as well, he's going to get Marsh out of this turn, right? Like, Gonchalo is going to play that Marsh out of now. Um, top Dex Energy, he, <laughs> we're going to attach it to the, to the Shaman, and we might see a Flippity Flap this Yeah, time. he's, no, I actually kind of like this Marsh out into Flippity Flap. Yeah, it, it's. I'm like, I'm just going to take the six, though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Although. He, if he gets Rare Candy Vika Volt off this Marshadow, he could rally back um, and get some chip damage on if he feels like that plan as well. Um, one of the rare times he'll be able to rally back is he'll be on for max damage. Yeah, for the full, uh, full 120 that he can hit. Um, so, Matt Ma Ma in case if anyone uh, isn't aware, is on the st stream. It only does apply to basics. Yeah. Um, which uh, is only really relevant in this case because the Vika Volt and the Grubbing both effectively have the same retreat cost then. So... Um, you actually weirdly for Gonzalo it means he doesn't have to retreat uh, the Grubbin before evolving this is something that you'd normally do he's going to end it with a Stevens uh, Stevens Resolve Stevens Resolve also a good way you know Flippity Flap's nice and everything but Stevens Resolve's also pretty this good this guarantees good you get the cards you need he's not the thing is, is I suspect it's, that's, anyway. that's Candy Vika Vault I see him taking well he has Candy in hand okay so it's Vika Vault and he's going to still play into it which means that the second Guzma in hand is his hand yep. is going to well, he doesn't have that anymore because he got Marsh out of uh, This is true. And we'll have to see if you can find a way to can get I, into it. Can I just say, we're well into this game and Hampus' discard pile has three cards in it. <laughs> this is what happens with Sylveon. Really cool. Like, like he, he's just basically gone fairy DC and like, he's taken two prize cards pretty quickly. Yeah, like, he's in control of this game, I would say, so far. 
Um, in fact, by taking this early prize lead, he gets into a position where he will be in the position of having taken over half of his prize cards, which means that it counts as a game if this goes into sudden death. Fairy win to get him another KO if he, if he wanted to. Oh, so total, well. total prize cards, uh, half of total prize cards seem to be taken. So yep. he's moving towards it. Well, he, he can get it right now if he, if he just wants to KO this, uh, this shaman here. So he gets the Lusamine. I think he could just decide... Crushing Hammer, get rid of the energy in play. I imagine he'd take that off the I don't think he has any issues with the energy being on that Lugia whatsoever. Not having seen... Oh, oh no, apparently he does. So, but having seen uh, the plan from Gonzalo uh, in the other games, you kind of understand that his main plan is to go with the Lele. So you want to be trying to get rid of those as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um, but actually, but doing it this way with the Guzma in hand, he can plea GX. He can, yeah. Um, he both still the Vika Vault, that. Yeah, he can use the Vika Vault and the Tepu Lele that's going to get Strong Charge to now. That's very clever from Vampus, actually. Yeah, so he's kind of going, that's fine, i just put it in your hand. That, like, yeah. it's, it's no good to you there either. What a play. Um, so he's kind of... You're kind of showing the experience. Like you said he played it, this deck a little bit last season, like kind of in a few small tournaments. But now he's kind of having to go a little bit further into a tournament. It's, it's, <laughs> a little and, bit. And like, being the biggest European regional we've ever had... Um, a little bit further into it. And it's a little bit bigger than the normal tournaments yeah. you said he was playing these things in. Um, but like to 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 be objectively true, like this this has just been an incredible game from Hampus. Uh, all three of these games have just been flawless decision making. Like yeah, and so we see two attachments onto the benched Tapulele, and a hundred come down. That's a good way to play around Plea from Gonzalo. Is just keep an even number of energy on the two Leles because he's probably spotted that play too. So Hampus. Now having to go, well, the, the original plan was, yep, I think he still goes for it. Mate, that's probably why he wanted the energy off the Shining Lugia, was just to keep, like, well, you can't retreat this. Yeah. Like, um, it's got a fairly, I think it has a kind of high retreat cost, it might be two. Two, so it's three believe. now, because of the, the Shrine. Yeah. Um, and yet, we do see Plea popping the two Lele, uh, one of the Lele, and the Vikavot back into hand. Yep. Very strong GX attack, that. Uh, with one Ray Candy prized. And I think he's used two Rick Andy already. Has he used two? Well, he's played two. Is he played two Vika Vaults yet? I don't know. So <laughs> if, if, there may not be uh, another Rick Andy available to him. That, well, I mean that is which very would true, be yeah. awful, awful news because he means well, that he's never getting the Federation again. <laughs> Ah, he didn't. He checked his deck very quickly, unfortunately, so I couldn't tell. There's only one candy I see in discard. It looks like just the one candy, actually. I think Hamza has just been dealing with the Grobins before they actually get the chance to evolve. Um, which again, he can do this turn. Yeah, he we know that he could try and find a way of getting to the uh, the bench grubbin. He's not going to, um, but we do see a knockout for Gonzalo. Um, not a knockout that I think Hampus might be too concerned about. No, he, um, you have to accept that some of your self beyonds are going to go down. Yeah, this is it's well. This is why you can do things like counter catching. You kind of understand that you're going to go down a couple of prize cards in some games because you spend most of the game just trying to kick energy off the board. That is another heads on crushing hammer. He's He's had pretty good luck with the old heads and the crushing hammers. Um, coin flip cards are always really weird. I think a lot of the coin flip cards you play have to be have such a good benefit for flipping heads, and crushing hammer is just one of those. Yeah, being able to remove an energy from the board, it, partly because it's an integral part of the game plan here, but we see it in other decks where it's just a nice option to have to be able to get to one less thing, and it's a coin flip, but that's kind of fair because it is an item. Yeah, absolutely, and you know. Let's just say there's a reason base set energy removal has never been reprinted. So he's just going to go ahead and use the magical ribbon here. Uh, Max Potion seems to be the first thing he's thumbed out. Um, expecting some kind of retaliation, he's gone for a Guzma as well. Um, Guzma seems to be a big, big target for magical ribbon that he just keeps going for it. Um, and I can't blame him, especially with the one Groban on the bench. Well, he just knows that he, if he can keep getting rid of it, <laughs> Gonzalo can never really play this game. <laughs> And as soon as I, you know, I think when, as soon as that, if he does deal with the next Vika Vault or the Grubbin at any, any stage in this, he's basically pretty content to say, you know, that's, so, that's yeah. it. Um, or, you know, he knows that that's a big step towards winning this series. So he takes the three cards. Do you think Hampus got, like, really bored of shuffling over the weekend? Because he already did quite a lot. Probably, but it's one of those things that after a while he's sort of got very practice and, like, has a really nice, smooth uh, shuffling motion. I would imagine. Um... So, we see Volkner now. Ray Candy. We know the Vigolt's in hand because it was played back. Yep. And he's just checking his energy. And there's not many grass energy left. And one more Ray Candy, as you said. And Gonchalo will be aware of that now. Um, he was kind of probably hoping to take it from the prizes. 
Well, uh, it, it, again, but going by our sequencing, that rare candy is the last prize that he'd end up taking. Uh, which is so not the ideal. Comes down. We see strong charge. There's maybe two grass energy left. Total. So yeah, you can see he's not. He's opting mm. not to take it because he knows to, in, in, that in all seriousness here he can just play the lightning energy drive. That's a hundred. Yeah. Well, that's smart on both sides. Smart on Hampus to just focus all his attention on like or as much of his attention as he can on one particular energy type, and smart again Shallow to um, to not to realize that he's doing that and just keep the lightning on. He's got two grass energy in hand as well. Yeah, so he really is running out of those in his deck yeah. currently. Hampus might, in this case, then be content to leave the Grass Energy on the Lugia because he's not going to be able to put it on the Ray that way. So It's like a discarded Grass Energy. It's actually a really tricky... Well, no, it's okay because he had the Guzma and he can just go in and max potion. But yep. the, uh, I think he's out of DCEs now. He is out of DCEs now. Um, Which now means that the only way he wins this game is through deck out. Or by attaching three Fairy Energy. Yeah, well, yeah, he can stack yeah. those up over a series of uh, several turns. But he, never, but he doesn't want to have to commit to that because he knows he needs max potions. And at least he, he's only losing one at a time yeah. currently. He could get around it, I guess, if he starts getting like Acer Rollers and stuff like that. Uh, but he um, actually can't do this because he has those two Sylveon he drew off the Marsh out of early on still stuck in his hand. Oh, of course he does. And the other one's pro uh, gone, which means he can't energy evolution anymore. Hampus looking through his deck like, why didn't I put one maintenance in here? <laughs> It's because it's not in format. And yeah, be a yeah. Error. Honestly, um, if I sat down next to someone playing maintenance, I'd be like, "You, you can play that. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay." Um, and he is missing one. Uh, you know, so he can't energy evolution anymore. Uh, he would, would have much preferred to have played Aether Roll on that turn. Mm. He has the judge in hand, though, so he, it's not ideal, but it's a way of getting them back in the back in the deck. Yeah, this is true. So we're also looking at the point with prize cards, where this game is like. One more prize card from uh, either side, and it's, this game counts, I believe, because uh, they'll be down to... Seven uh, minutes to go as well. Yeah, so we're thinking about like, that. The getting to the point where we understand um, like, the thing is we're looking for... Like, we might be going to the uh, single prize game. Uh, the, so it'd be a sudden, so it's a new six, six prize game in this case. Okay. Um, so we're going to have a really complicated uh, kind of thing of, okay, we're going to start all <laughs> over again, and That's someone needs to take it. Yeah. Okay, so Conchala went for the strong charge, he's attaching to the bench, spreading it all out. Um, again, that escape rope is still active for him, it's still somewhere in his deck. So he doesn't need to attach to the Beacon Bolt right now to try and pay out three trials. That would just be a waste, for, waste of energy on his part. Um, it def this, to me, looks like he's going for that Ray strat again, where he just plays Ray, he's got all this energy on his board, and as long as he can keep the type, the, get the right types of energy on that Ray, he's going to blow up the Sylveon and potentially win the game. He's got Ray in hand now. He's used a strong charge, though, so this isn't the turn you play no, and he is, yeah, he's just going to have to pass. But next turn, if he gets the um, escape rope. So now we can just see the beginning of the Lusamine loop, the, the crushing hammer is in hand. Mm -hmm. That's, That's tails, tails. Yeah. yeah. The pip is the one. And he's got a fairly large hand size, knows that he's going to be magical ribboning for the remainder he's of this game. He's magical ribbon, yeah. And I see two Plumeria. As the first uh, two cards he takes on that. <laughs> well, so Gangella can... does not have the uh, the escape rope in hand, but this is the turn. Like, if, if he yeah, gets if he it... can hit it, he wins. Um, I think he has the energy in deck. He has the Volkner. He has the Volkner. Yeah, I think is he has Volkner for escape rope going to win or regionals. Yes. No way. <laughs> it could well. No, is, is that, it Volkner's is assistant? Is I think, oh, no, I, was thinking, I thought it was the Volkner. <laughs> Um, I thought I saw the Volkner in hand. If he you has it, be so excited <laughs> about that play. Right, if he does have the escape rope, he throws it down with the with the ray. And remember, Stormy wins this time. Yeah, the escape rope. The only way he can actually move the speaker vault out of the active because he can't Guzma, um, because the ordering of the effects is. Uh, the kind of the, the key thing in Guzma. You gotta and, do the first part before you do the second part. And here it says each. So the opponent goes first, but each player does it. So how you do the full thing. How funny would it be if he went for the Stormy Winds and discarded the escape rope? I, I think he would scoop. Yep, probably. <laughs> um, he's checking his deck though. It looks like he might just have. It's one energy. So yeah, there's just the one lightning? Yeah, and it's he's often to attach it. So he does have a few in hand, so he could also Cynthia. Yeah, that's true, that's true. So he could Cynthia, ready to, you know, hoping to draw into the escape rope, and by playing the energy out, 
he you know it's one less card he could draw into that he doesn't want. That, does he have energy in hand? I think there was one in hand. Okay, okay. Um, Oh, oh, but then how, does he, how does he power up the ray then? He, he's still got recyclers. He's still got recyclers. Yeah, so he, he hasn't seen any of those yet. Yep. Uh, and I believe in this game they are going to get um, near a full value. I stopped counting. Because um, there's an awful lot of energy and there's an awful lot being removed. It's quite this difficult. Is, this is what we call enough damage. Right. Seven, eight, nine. So there's nine energy um, that we, I can see. Yep. And okay. there's probably also <laughs> some in the discard pile. Bodybuilding dumbbells will not put Sylvia on out of KO. Right? No. Um, so we see Rayquaza again. Yeah, but he pop, you don't want to bench that um, in, in case of it goes with DC. He doesn't know the Hampus only plays two. And I also think he still hasn't seen the energy recycler. No, he still hasn't. So th there's still two of those I, I in his deck. I imagine he would have just played it if he saw it, right? Um, you wait until next turn. Ah, uh, true, unless you need yes. the energy in hand. It means you don't top deck the energy, and it means if you get judged, you don't draw into just energy. So yes, that's true. So unless he wants the energy in hand, and I don't... He might, well, he would need one, to be fair, because he'd need to find the third attack. Oh, no, he did because he can just use Ray's ability. Um, but he's in a position where he could be able to find a way to take this game. Um, but it might have to be over the course of a couple of turns of kind of set things up and then go. I think Hampus might be considering an Eevee with this Magical Ribbon. And if he can buy it, if Kinchalo can miss it again for one more turn, um, which it looks like he might, that could be what he needs to win this game. Gonchalo's hand is actually like really bad. <laughs> like it's it rescue stretcher, rare candy, ultra ball ray energy. Yeah, it's none of the cards he needs. That that's a that's a hand I want Cynthia right back into the deck. And it looks like he's got an old, another another ultra, another ball. ultra ball. He he can't play the ray right now. He has to wait for that energy recycler. Uh, although again, he could just be content to just to pass. But the the clock is on him for that. Yeah, um, well, they would be going into the, uh, the you know, the uh, Sudden Death Six prize card game where they just have to take one prize card. Um, and if they were to go into that situation, uh, Gonzalo is the one who's less likely to break. Yeah. So true. he might be a case of... A, but if Gonzalo has, the has an edit to win the game right now, surely he'd just want to take it rather than have to go through the stress of a, of a tiebreaker. <laughs> like. uh, well, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to make it through the stress of a tiebreaker <laughs> in a final. Um, but it looks very much like we're heading there. Yeah. If I'm Gonchalo, I think what I do is just draw, look at it. Is it energy recycler? No. Nope. Declare pass. And I think if you just do that, you have the best chance of doing it. Team Skullgrun coming there from Hampus. Um, no energy this time for, for Gonchalo to show up. Um, handy that all his energy are in his discard pile because it means Skullgrun can't pick them off, I guess. Um, <laughs> the EV comes down and that is going to prevent this whole dunking situation. Yeah, this is... It'll be a big turn because the Ray will take... Um, two prize cards and yeah. then could go into the next one now Hamas is in that situation where he's got the two Sylveon in hand like you were just saying he's just going to eventually Eevee and Magical Ribbon um, this is where Hamas is losing both of his double colorless energy um, well if he'd attached the Eevee this is where Hamas is losing both of his double colorless energy really would have come into play so it's often it's weird that he opted not to attach the Eevee it's like he didn't want to reveal to Gonchalo that both the Sylveons were in his hand yeah that is very much the, the thing that's going to happen there is he's it, like yeah. there's no point attaching to it right yeah. now um you can just hold hold it. You can also, you know, it's also a case of maybe he just didn't take the fairy energy. Is the other the other situation? So no, no, he had a fairy energy in the hand. So, so about it. we see a mysterious treasure. I think just trying to aggressively thin. There's not many cards left in here, and there are two energy recycler in these like yeah, bottom it's just ten get, or so. Get those cards out. I think it might be ten cards left, and there's two of these are energy recycler. Um, so you definitely cannot stormy winds. Yeah. Until you've seen at <laughs> least exactly, one. Exactly. Yeah. So he's just going to hold them in his hand. He's going to use Mysterious Treasure to thin and his pass. deck. And he knows that Gonzalo can't attack. Don't forget that we do have three turns after the fact. So uh, No, we do not. In uh, Do we not? Do we still, do, so we, I think we still have the three turns actually okay, in time. Okay, so. we still have the three turns in time. So that's two chances for Gonzalo to get Energy Recycler. <laughs> energy Recycler, then into the... Um... Well, okay, so just to go by the rules of the game, right? For the, by the rules that we've, we've been given, or to the best of our knowledge, are true, right? <laughs> Skull of shows him an incredible hand. It's, if Gonchalo were to knock out this Sylvia, that would be over half of the total prizes taken, and Gonchalo would have a prize lead, which would mean he wins. Is that correct? I think so. These are such awkward situations. They just, they just don't come off often. Yeah, I think it might work out. Bodybuilding dumbbells on both those Sylveons. <laughs> Hampus being very careful. <laughs> Guzma as well is now an active option for um, Gonchalo. Let's not forget about that because Hampus does have the bench Pokemon at this point. Not sure how many Guzma he's gone through um, up till now. Time has just about been called with Hampus at turn zero. I think. So, 
the, ju- the table judge is now having to go, so the rules have changed. This is why we're so unsure of what the correct uh, sequencing is here. Um, but there was a rule change, I think, this season. And it's just come into effect of this is the new rule. So it looks like we still have the, turn, the three turns of time because yeah. they haven't okay. immediately set up a, a new game. And we get, we get back to the whole rule of Gonchalo didn't draw a turn. So yep. So he's technically, he's pro- yeah, he's, he will be turn one. He is going to fail an S-ball for turn one. Not what he wants to do. Um, but he wants to get it out of, out of the way. Uh, well, also look at the size of Hampus's hand. <laughs> I think it's about as big as the deck now. It's it's very big. And just passes. Yeah. So, so two. two. And I, I don't know. There's nothing really Hampus can do this turn. Surely, right? It's he just has to try and prevent KOs. So I guess this is just discarding as many energy as he can. So I think really. It could just be a case of just past turn because he knows full well that this is going to go into the sudden death uh, period. Yeah, just to confirm, it would be a sudden death six prize card game. Yes, um, so you just have to take one prize card of your six. Oh, is that, that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, so, so it used to be the rule that you'd have to put only one prize card out and that obviously changes things quite a lot because you have more cards in your deck which changes all the percentages and the odds. Yeah, yeah, no, um, it, is more, it is fair, I agree. But... What a wild game of Pokemon, like, and then of course. Yeah, so yeah, so there was a lot of tickets, like, if it did go to time, you just go, N, I win. Yep. Like, if you went first in Sudden Death, I played N, that was it. N into Alone and Volpix for Beacon. <laughs> yep, and great, great Campus way, is just yeah. going to play... That, that's his last turn, it's down to Gonchalo. And it's... there's no way he can take four prize cards. <laughs> if he top decks the Energy Recycler, he can at least do something, I... I didn't see what he got, but I imagine he would have played it immediately. Yep. So, sudden death it is. Sudden death. In the final of Frankfurt 2018 Regional Championships, we're going to sudden death. Right. So, (laughs) thank you very much for joining us on this commentary thing, Joe, because um, as a guest commentator, you now have to put up with sudden death in a final. This is a baptism by fire. Well, hold on a minute. They've got the match left. They're they're shaking hands. They're putting their decks in boxes. Um... Okay, so no, they're saying that it was because Hampus was head on prizes. I think they were ending it on the prize. Is uh, that how we're doing? Prize it? things. Um, this appears to be what was agreed. Hampus gave someone the match slip with nobody signing it. Oh wait, wait, we'll right. find out now. It was signed, and I believe that was Hampus winning um, because he was head on prize cards in time. Um, but I don't remember what the rule is. So <laughs> yeah, again, because they're all changing as well recently. Yeah, they've, um, they've changed the rule. But if that is the case, congratulations to Hampus. All um, oh, right, so congrats to Hampus. That was a great deck and an incredible performance for sure. Like, um, and um, well, we'll cut quickly to um, a quick interview, maybe, um, if we can. Uh, we're having some some issues uh, currently with uh, OBS, so hopefully we can uh, queue up an interview. Yeah, so here we go. Okay, here we go here so here. we're gonna go uh, have a very quick break. One of us can go grab uh, uh, grab him, um, and we'll have a quick interview with the winner. See you then.